Good morning, everyone who is uh, tuned in, streaming, and to you guys here in the audience today. My name is Juliana, and I'll be walking you guys through uh, the Grabio platform, and I'll explain a little bit more what Grabio is, but we're here in partnership with LiveView to show you guys how you can bring in all of your streams into a virtual platform, essentially switch all your streams, synchronize your LiveView units, and then push them out to your digital destinations and even to the LiveView uh, matrix. So grab you a little bit about the company. Um, we are a 100% cloud-based platform based in AWS. Our backend is AWS. And what we do, um, three tools. Our first tool is a cloud production where we can bring in multiple streams, throw on graphics, add a remote commentary, and then push that out to multiple destinations, including digital, OTT, social, and professional egress like SRT, Wrist, and Zixi. We have another tool, which is called Grabio Studio, which is for live clipping to be able to bring in your live streams into the platform, mark your in, your out points, and then distribute that content directly, again, to the digital platforms. And then our third tool is Grabio Editor, which is our live editing tool where everything in this ecosystem can work together to cut your content, edit them in the same platform, and then push them out either via a production, like you guys see up here, or directly to digital and social. So to get started, what you guys are watching right now on my screen is the virtual control room. Essentially what we can do is via the live view units, we can go ahead and push those to ingest points directly within Grabio, synchronize them all within the cloud, and then do a very robust production by simply clicking on your different streams and switching them to programs. So what you see here on the left hand side is the preview monitor and then on the right hand side is the program monitor. That's what we're publishing out, that's what we're pushing out to our different destinations. But as you can see here, I'm doing a very simple one-to-one -one stream switch. These can all be streams coming into the platform from LiveView units. You can synchronize them all within the platform using the timestamps and then push out your production with multiple cameras. Now we do work off of a layering system as you guys see here. And what this is helpful with is when you start incorporating graphics or picture in picture or different types of elements into your production. So if I wanna go ahead and throw on a lower third, I can go ahead and push that out. It comes out with an animation. Um, this is an MOV file. You can create it in After Effects. Go ahead and push it into the platform and use that as your transition so we can add bunch of different graphics. We can do very cool picture-in-picture -picture, um, production. So if I go ahead here, I remove my graphics layer. I have a VOD clip that's also been ingested into the platform. I can go ahead and arrange that as I'd like. I can add a different slate and overlay in the background and then go ahead and push that VOD asset out with my live stream underneath. As you guys see here, we have a duration of six minutes on this clip. So I can go ahead and remove that if I'd like. Um, different types of sources that we can go ahead and add into the production, right? So here on the right rail, you'll see the different types of sources we can add. Very standard, uploading a file directly from your computer or from a Dropbox or a Google Drive or a OneDrive. Um, you guys can go ahead and add your assets directly into your account. We can bring in live streams, and so this is where LiveView and our partnership with LiveView really comes to life. And so from directly from the LiveView units, you can go ahead and add an ingest point. You have your encoder. You can go ahead and plug these details into your LiveView units, add that as a source, and as soon as you start pushing content over, it'll start being ingested into the platform, and you can use it as one of these live streams that you see here to go ahead and do your live uh, switching and your live broadcast. We can also add content from our campaigns, right? So our folders where we're storing all of our VOD, we can go ahead and clip that content, add it into the campaigns, and then bring it back into your production. If you're doing you know, a post-match show or you're doing a pre-show, you can bring the content that's already been clipped and cut and add it right back into your production. We can add a web source, which is any coded HTML5 source. So if you have graphics that have been coded, you can go ahead and bring them in via a web source. And then we do have uh, third-party integration. So we work with other partners um, like Singular Live, Flowix, Never Know, where we can bring in more custom graphics packages. I'll show you guys what that looks like right here. So if I were to go ahead and push this out, I now have what looks like a very robust production where I can change my stream beneath and then go ahead and push that out as well. So imagine these are three live view units coming into the platform. I can go ahead and adjust those streams 
beneath all of my graphics layers, right? So these graphics I can change on the fly, again, with our third-party partners. And I can also add, now when we get into different types of sources, I can add a local source directly to my computer, so to this production. Local source is any camera or microphone that's connected directly into my computer. So it can even be something like a capture card that you can go ahead and bring in and bring that live stream and that live source directly into the platform. And then one of the coolest uh, features that we have is the ability to bring remote guests directly into the production. So this remote guest doesn't need to have access to the back end. All they need is a relatively stable internet connection, their computer, a microphone, and then they're good to go. It could simply be their mic from their internal computer. So what I can do is simply create this guest link, which I'm gonna do right now, Juliana guest. And then this source and this link, I can go ahead and send it to anyone from all over the world. So one of the great things about Grabio is that because it is 100% remote, I can essentially be on the comfort of my couch doing an entire remote production with all of my guests also remotely. They could be taking an interview from their kitchen and we can go ahead and bring those assets and those live sources directly into the account. So what that guest will see is this interface right here. You guys can see me here on my FaceTime camera on my computer. And then once I go ahead and start streaming, you'll see that that feed is now coming into the broadcast. What can I do with this feed? I can go ahead and adjust the display settings. I can put this top left. I can manually move this feed around as well. And then once I go ahead and do that, I can also share, if I take this off of the screen, I can also share the program return with this guest. So if I want the guest to see exactly what's going on in program, all I have to do is jump into the settings, share my program with that guest, and now the guest will be able to see that program coming in, they'll be able to hear it, and then once they're out live and they're on the actual broadcast, we do have mixed minus, so they won't be able to hear their own echo, but they can do remote commentary, or they could do a live round table and be able to see exactly what's going on, what VOD the producer is throwing back, and uh, if other people are also joined in on this call, they'll be able to talk and interact with them as well. So all of this is being done in the cloud, completely remote, and all I have to do is bring in my sources, switch them, and go ahead and push this out to a remote destination. We can add a playlist, so if I have a top 10 VOD, I can go ahead and just add them to a playlist and push them out automatically as if it was an auto play out. And then we have snapshots, which is just a way to create and organize your scenes in the preview monitor so that your rundown and once you have your scenes already set up, you can just go ahead and switch from one shot to the next shot without having to arrange your layers too much. And then whenever you're ready, all you have to do is create a broadcast push out to all of your social integrations. So we do have a direct integration with Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, or we can push out to custom RTMP, right? So the Live View matrix can receive RTMP. You can push directly back out to Live View. We can also push out to a custom player or a custom RTMP point. We can also send out Pro Egress, which is SRT, Zixi, uh, Media Connect. We can push that out as well. We do have an audio mixer which for an A1, that this is all they really care about is to mix the audio, maybe watch all the sources, which I'll show you our multi-viewer in a bit. We can go ahead and bring in all of the live streams and we can bring in our guests as well. So now we have three streams that are coming into the platform. I'm monitoring their audio levels. I can obviously go ahead and update the gain, create, you know, adjust the different levels. I can solo in on a direct source as well. And if you have a guest and someone's dog starts barking or someone's baby starts crying, you can always mute their source as well if it's affecting the broadcast. So this audio mixer works really great in conjunction with our multi-viewer. So if I were to go ahead and open up a multi-viewer in a different window, in a different display, so if you have two different monitors and your laptop using can be used as the switcher, you can go ahead and view and monitor all of the sources that are coming in to your account by simply selecting on the source you want and then adding this uh, screen directly to a different uh, monitor, right? I can move this window around. So my A1, again, all he can be doing is simply watching the multi-viewer and then watching the audio mixer as well to make sure that the streams are all aligned. All right, let me go ahead and cancel out of here really quickly. I don't know if anyone has any questions right now. I've sort of run through 
the gambit of features that this has. But if you guys have any questions right now, we can definitely go over them. Um, any functionalities, if we have any questions on third-party partners, you can definitely go ahead and ask. Absolutely. So because we do, the question was if we're able to record the content in this DVR. So everything that's being pushed out into program is automatically being recorded in our 24-7 DVR. So what we can do, and I'll go ahead and switch over here to a different tab, which will take us to the home screen. What I can do to cut this, to segment this, and then maybe use it later as like a fake live or, or archive it into my storage, what I can do is jump into the live clipping portion um, of this production. And everything that I've been adding to my screen, I can simply, like many different editors, mark my in point, mark my out point. That's the three minute segment that I want to go ahead and publish out. And then I can set a folder where I want to go ahead and save this to. I can send this to an editing sequence within the same environment and um, the same Grabio ecosystem. I can add branding if I want to go ahead and add a bump out. And this is, again, if I'm sharing this clip out to social, maybe I want to add a watermark or I want to add a bump out or a bump in to brand my content. If I have a partnership with a sponsor and I want to be able to monetize this content, I can go ahead and add these parameters so that when I share it, it will have those elements tagged onto it. But if I simply want to go ahead and save my segment, I can add my title and we can put, you know, NAB day two. I can add my title. I don't have to share this out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't have to share this out to multiple destinations if I don't want, but we do have our list of options here, right? I can incorporate my Facebook, Twitter, YouTube page. We can share to Instagram Reels. I can share this to an FTP, an AWS S3 bucket, and now with the rise of TikTok, we can go ahead and share our content to TikTok as well. And so you may be asking, okay, well, how do I share a vertical clip to TikTok? Very easy here using our clipper. So all I need to do is change up the aspect ratio. If I don't want this padded, I can crop it and select what part of this clip and what part of this uh, broadcast I want to go ahead and send out. So that is everything that's being recorded. I'm not necessarily, oops, I'm not necessarily um, broadcasting this out yet. So it's simply here in my program monitor and that's what I'm recording live as it's coming in so that I can save and clip it and either archive it or publish it to different destinations. The file type for the live stream or from the content that we're pushing out? Right, so we can set up a bunch of different um, encoding profiles for those live streams that are coming in. So we can work in 1080p, 30fps, a 3.5 megabit stream. We can go higher res than that. Or if you're simply doing productions for like social media, we can always bring down the resolution to 720 as well. And as for files that you can upload directly into the platform, so if we're talking VOD files or standard graphic files, um, the whole gambit, right? MAV files, MP4 files, we can bring in files that have alpha keys. So if you do have that transparent background that we want to go ahead and bring in, right? This is a MAV file that has that transparent background. So we can go ahead and push that out as well. And those are the file types that you can bring directly into the production so that you have all of your elements and sources uh, ready to go. All right. Any other questions? Perfect. Um, if you guys do have any questions, feel free to reach me afterwards. We're also in the AWS booth um, if you'd like to follow up with anything else. Thank you, guys.